have it, gosh darn. Good morning, good morning, backstagers. Hello, Charnel. Hi, Gail. I'm just sitting up here. No, you take your time. It's just it's always just very encouraging when your speaker comes into the group. <laughs> you, don't, <laughs> you don't have to worry. I'm so excited for you to bless these women. Me too. Me too. It'll be fun. Will you, um, Charnel, will you have time if um, I, I probably will only do about 10 minutes at the most at the beginning, and then um, will you have time for any Q&A or do you want them to submit Q&A? Yeah, actually, yeah, if we have time, we could do Q&A at the end. Yeah. All right. Good. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can go a little bit past 12. So we'll just see how long it how, how long it goes. Tammy, what was your big takeaway? Tell us, we get to, so in the backstage, we get to hear your homework. So, so what, what, what are you going to go live and share about? What were your big things from, um, and you, it's probably all boring old news for you because you're. No, it's not. It's always amazing. And I love to, and, and you know, each time you, because of your growth and where you at, you pick up mm. different things that you didn't because you weren't ready, you know? Yeah. Um, I really liked the, I liked the way you did the big P and the little P, oh. the big P and the little P. And yeah. you know, I always love the sandbag story. Yeah, that's a good one. But then it all starts with your identity. Yeah, amen. You know, we don't, I think, realize how much it really does just all root there and grow up out into that, you know, beautiful tree. And, 
Yeah. And so I think I'm going to talk about that. Awesome. You know, thank you for saying that because, well, two things. One, I mean, the Lord definitely gave me the big P, little P. And then the other one was, um, you know, that reminder, he gave me that as well, that whenever we're struggling, you know, you have, you have some fear, you have, you have something come, you know, it's always to go back to who, who's, who's are we? Who does he say he is? And who does he say we are? And it always start because that's where we go for that rest and that peace. And from there, then we can like, ah, now I can see a way forward. Now yeah. I can see my next step. Yeah. Anybody else want to share from this morning, something that they will be sharing when they do their live? I'll share. Thank you. Um, I guess the biggest thing for me was that realizing that God brought me into my business Amen. and that there's a purpose that I am doing what I'm doing and Amen. just the, just the equipping that he's given me so that I can share it with others. Yes. Beautiful. Yes, yes, yes. Awesome. 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 All right. We still have a couple more minutes. Anybody else want to do a share? You're muted, Molly. Can you, uh, let me see Molly, if I can um, hear. Can we... Am I on yeah. now? You're on. I haven't found the words for it, but it's been a learning week for me, and uh, I'm trying to figure out how a five foot nine human being has spent their life drowning in three feet of water. Is <laughs> mm -hmm. basically what it is. So there's lots of uh, areas in life that. I've never lived life as a grown up. Yeah. And uh, so a lot of this, uh, it's not just going live, it's a challenge. It's some pretty basic everyday life skills. <laughs> Oh. Molly, thank you so much for your vulnerability with that, because I know everyone can resonate, um, you know, on some level with exactly what you just said, all of us, it's, we are all in a maturing process. We are all in a spiritual maturing process and, and sometimes becoming aware of our immaturity at the different levels is, is please hear this is a great gift. It's when we're not aware of it and we're asleep to it. That's the problem. And lastly, I just want to say before I start is that um, what I was feeling when you said that, trying to figure out why I've been in this, you know, I'm five foot nine. I've been in this three, drowning in three feet of water. Um, I want what the Lord was showing me when you were saying that is he's look up, look up. So and, um, <laughs> we, we've been drowning. We, when we feel we're drowning in the water, it's because we're down. We're, our eyes are down and we're, we're, we're depending on ourself. And so we're, we're in three feet of water trying to figure out how to get out. And he says, child, look up. I'm right here. I've got my hand right here to pull you out of that water. And we're like, oh, you mean it was that easy all the time? You know? All right. Thank you, Molly. Thank you for that. So ladies, um, Every day you are going to be given um, the you're going to get uh, or you're going to get a Zoom link for the challenge and you're going to get a Zoom link for the backstage. You're going to get a replay for the challenge and a replay for the backstage. OK, so um, the backstage is four days. The challenge is going to go on really seven days. It's five formal days. And then I do a couple bonus days. Obviously, as we go along, not all of you will stay. I'm just telling you, statistically, you're going to start wandering off. You're going to start somehow letting all the distractions of the world come in and um, tell you that you've got other more important things to do. And I'm here to just 
say to you that I believe the Lord has called you here and he wants to speak to you and don't leave before the blessing happens. Keep staying in there. Let it keep building for you. And as we move into the end of the week, sometimes it's through other people's testimonies, through other people's questions, through other people's lives that you get great, great blessing. So um, don't give up. All right, so what we're doing in this backstage is we're taking these concepts with, with purpose, all right, around purpose. We're taking them and we're applying some strategy to them. God is a God of wisdom. He's a God of order. So of course he's got strategy for us and he doesn't leave us on our own to figure it out, okay? He's there for us 24 seven in the form of his Holy Spirit that we can speak to. And we, if we make space to hear him, he will speak. Now, in this challenge, I'm bringing in four incredible women of God. And every day you get to experience, um, they're all kingdom coaches. They are all very experienced, experienced. And before I even introduce Charnel to you, I'm going to share a little fishing story about, because I believe Jesus spoke to us in parables, right? He spoke to us in stories. Why do we do that? because they're impactful. Like the sandbag story, if you were just in the last one, when we, when we see a story like that, we envision ourselves in it and it impacts us and it stays with us. And that's why Jesus, being all wisdom and all truth, spoke to us in parables. So I want to share a story with you. I live currently up on Lake Erie in the United States. By the way, Charnel, we have, there are over 670 women registered for this challenge, and there are over 62 registered for the backstage. So praise God for what he's doing and, and the, the ladies that he's bringing in from all over the world, from South Africa, from Nigeria, from, from Australia, from the UK, Ireland, Scotland, all over the United States. So Thank you, Jesus, for this platform that you've given us that we can come together as believers and focus on you and minister so that we can minister in the marketplace, so that we can bless financially our families and learn how to teach other women to do the same. Okay, um, here's the fishing story, and then I'm going to introduce you to Charnel. It won't be very long. Uh, I live on Lake Erie. Um, Lake Erie is the, of all the Great Lakes in the United States, um, Lake Erie produces the most food, meaning fish, of all the Great Lakes combined. All right. Well, why is that? Because it's shallow. Because it's shallow, the sunlight. Hello, anybody with me? The sunlight. Who's the light, right? That makes me cry. The sunlight and the Lord just gave. I've told this story so many times and not one time did that come, this part come. Okay. The sunlight can get to the vegetation. It, it can make more plants, right? Plants need light, photosynthesis, right? Remember, uh, what was that? Ninth grade, eighth grade photosynthesis? Okay, so um, that's about all I remember from biology. Okay, so photosynthesis, the light is what creates the growth, all right? So because of all that plant life, the fish thrive. That's why there's more food coming out of Lake Erie than any other Great Lakes combined. All right, the story gets so much better. So um, when you fish in Lake Erie, there's a couple prominent fish, steelhead trout, because we have lots of, of, of creeks that flow into Lake Erie. Well, um, steelhead trout, some where I live is the number one steelhead trout fishing in the United States. Who knew, right? Men primarily, sorry, ladies, but primarily men come and ladies fish too, but come from all over the country to fish for steelhead trout there. All right. There's also another fish that's very prominent and it's perch. Okay. Perch. Um, they're not very big. Most perch are about this long and they're great eating. They're very yummy, mild white fish. Okay. So on our lake, sorry, you keep seeing my arm. I've got to admit everybody in. Okay, so on our lake, there is something called the perch patch. All right, so we go out. Now we used to have a boat, we don't anymore, but we would go out. We did not have a fish finder. 
what we knew is we were going for perch. So we knew what kind of rod to use because when you go out for perch, you need, um, you put two hooks. Have you ever heard of this, anybody? Two hooks on the end of your line, two. And the weights, there's a certain amount of weight that you put with each hook. You use worms. You can use other stuff. We use worms, all right? So you go out, you put your, you, and wait, so you go out. There's a very specific place you go. We would leave the marina and there was like an angle <clears throat> and, and you go four miles in that direction. And when you get there, you'd see all these other boats clustered around and it was called the perch patch. I have no idea why. Don't ask me why the perch all seemed to gather there, but they just did. Now, these other fishermen, they would, they probably had fish finders and all the things. All we had to do was go find them and find the perch patch. Now, we knew exactly what bait to use. We knew exactly what rod to use. We knew exactly what line to use, and we knew exactly where to go. This is fishing in the kingdom. The Lord doesn't send us out into Lake Erie and say, go fish. Have fun with that. We're like, well, wait a minute, Lord. What am I fishing for? I don't know. Just go find a fish. I hope you're all getting the analogy to network marketing here. Just go find a fish. Well, Lord, how do I know what the, that fish likes? I don't know. Go ask them. How do I know? Do you think the Lord would say that? Do you think the Lord of all wisdom, of all order, of all strategies, is going to tell you just to go out to Lake Erie, waste your gas, try a bunch of different bait, try a bunch of different hooks, rods, locations? Pretty exhausting, right? Can I get an amen? Anybody feeling exhausted from the marketing of your company's products? Most of you, all of you, are with companies that have amazing products. Or guess what? They wouldn't be in business. All of you have companies that have invested millions of dollars in training. So why are you struggling? I believe most often what Charnel is about to introduce you to is branding. Your message, as I said in the last thing, Charnel, I think you're going to like this. Um, your message is messy because you're in that boat driving all around Lake Erie throwing a bunch of stuff in the water in different locations and you leave the location <coughs> because you didn't have the right bait or you didn't have the right hook or you didn't have the right location. So you get frustrated and you leave. So your message is your marketing. And it's so important that you're clear on what your message is and your message is less about you and more about Jesus. And Charnel's going to be talking to us about that. But, you know, <clears throat> God does not <clears throat> send the lobster fishermen <clears throat> in Maine. They know exactly where to go. They know exactly what to put in the trap. They know exactly where to drop it. And, <clears throat> and guess what? They do it and they go home and they come back and they pull up those traps. They don't spend all day long out there exhausted, sweating. Okay, what are you looking for? overdoing overworking working harder 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 no oh, they work smarter oh the puppy if someone's speaking if you don't oh, realize oh, it but you're not here? muted if you oh, could please mute your Come here, baby. mute your phone please <laughs> or mute your line thank you okay so um i am going to now oh, introduce you whatever you if there's a gentleman speaking, your phone is not muted or your computer, if you could please. Um, so we have a real clear copy for our replay. Thank you for muting your lines. All right, Charnel. Charnel is a bold woman of God. She is a little powerhouse and I cannot wait for you to meet her. I found her in another group. The Lord directed me to her and we became friends and I have paid for her coaching um, on branding. And she is, um, she is the CEO of Purple and Peach is the name of her company. She's a branding coach. She's a photographer specialist. Um, she's out in California. So if any of you are out there, you can maybe even get to her locally. She is a Christian entrepreneur and she helps Christian entrepreneurs to create divine 
branding, irresistible brand to their audience, okay? She has, um, her, her mission is to help you to create that irresistible brand so that you can have a profitable impact for the kingdom. All right, you're impacting the hearts of the women that you've been called to serve so that you can have a greater impact for the kingdom. Um, she is a brand strategist and I know she's got some top tips for us today. And um, Charnel, I'm on my little screen. So I am going to turn this over to you now and let you take over. Awesome, thank you, Gail. That was a great introduction. I probably want you to come with me when I have to do other speaking engagements so you can introduce Deal. me. Deal. <laughs> well, hello, ladies. I'm just gonna say I'm so honored and I'm so blessed to be here. Um, some of your faces I already, I recognize. Um, and I thank you, Gail, for, so much for the opportunity. Um, I think for mm -hmm. us as women of God to come together um, in one accord, especially about business, a topic like this, I think we can expect for the Lord to meet us um, in this specific area. Um, so I'm I'm just blessed, honestly. I, I could not look back on the time that I've been in business and predicted that this was going to happen. And I will say that I'm here because of the branding that God has taught me to do um, in my own business. So when I started, I didn't have a brand. <laughs> I just knew there was something in me that God slight tiny whisper I wasn't sure if it was him but I felt like it's time for me to start the business I started it and I believe God met me but I went through a season where I was praying for clients I was praying for customers I needed to replace my full-time income and the it just seemed like they were not coming in and I remember out of that frustrating place I cried out to the Lord and I'm like, God, you called me out here and now you're leaving me stranded. I got bills to pay and things to take care of. What am I supposed to do? And so over the course of a couple of weeks, God started to deal with me about uh, stewarding and that for him, it, it matters to, to him blessing me, uh, my faithfulness to him. So yes, he called me to start the business and yes, he's gonna support me, but now I have to prove my faithfulness to him um, by investing and by taking care of my business, stewarding the 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 messaging, stewarding all of it, and then that's what we're going to get into the branding. Um, and so finally, at one point, God, as He saw me, like I started investing in these like small programs, conferences, just really like okay. I'm all in, I need to prove this. And then he finally revealed to me my brand, my business name and all the above. And with that, um, he also revealed to me that there are so many other believers who are called to this marketplace that's completely ignoring the power of branding. Um, and I get that, yes, we have an amazing God that can bless us. Like uh, Gail was talking about fish, you know, Jesus went and found a coin out of a fish, you know, to pay taxes, right? So um, yes, God can do anything, but, for him, it's about us being profitable servants. Amen. How can he bless us with more if we can't even prove to him that we want to steward the more? So we have to start with little. We have to start even if what you start off with is very minimal. Um, God sees that at a much larger scale than, than maybe you do. Yes. Um, and so at that point, when I finally started making these stewardship steps towards building my business, that's when he started pouring in revelation, um, the strategy, all these things, and the need for a brand coach um, in the Christian marketplace, because mm. again, we're, we're really ignoring our brands. And I honestly feel God's heart that, you know, Christian businesses should be completely excelling in the, the industry. I feel Amen. like we should have the best brands, the best businesses, yes. all of it. Yes. But we're, we're kind of getting outshot, outshined by uh, secular businesses. So, um, so to, till today, I really just want to share with you all four foundational steps in building that divine kingdom brand. Um, the first thing I'm going to start with is making it up in your mind and making that decision that you were called to start a business, whatever that industry is, you're called there, make a decision, don't go back on it, um, have your confidence fully in that because I, I think that's um, the starting point. If you don't believe that you're called to this, then you're not going to attract your customers. You're not going to attract your clients. Um, so I believe if God has anointed you to start a business, then that means he has customers for you. 
who's looking for you. So they're out there. It's not a matter of, oh, did these people want my products? How can I market it to, for people to buy it? Um, those people are already out there. If God's called you to business, that means he has what I call harvest hearers or people that have a keen ear to your messaging, which is why uh, brand messaging is super important. So make that resolve in your mind. Don't go back on it. It doesn't matter what people are saying about your business, what you're doing. You've made your decision. God's called you here. Um, once you establish that, because I feel like identity, and I think, who was it? Tammy was talking about that identity. Um, that's important to have if you're going to move forward and, and show up. Branding is not about creating a, a mask. It's being you. And so who you truly are is going to show up regardless of what you put on top of it. Um, so that's important. Foundational divine brand identity. It's resolved. God's called me here. So there are customers out there for me. Um, number two, understand what a brand is and what it isn't. So I think definitions are important when we're laying the foundation for building a kingdom brand. Um, so a lot of people have ideas of what a brand is, you know, brands, colors, logos, taglines, fancy names, and all these things. Yeah, that's part of it. Um, but a brand to me is two things. It's a differentiator and it's a connector. Mm -hmm. So when we're all jumping into the marketplace, like I know when I started my photography business, I was one of maybe a thousand photographers in Los Angeles, right? So we're all doing the same thing, branding photography, um, same, maybe we're using the same gear, maybe we're using the same, you know, editing software. So very similar uh, businesses and, and that's okay. Because I, I hardly think there's an original idea out there these days, but you know, similar brands. And so what makes me, what makes Purple and Peach different from what's out there? Um, so your brand to me is what distinguishes your business from everyone else. And, and I believe that difference, whatever that is, they call it the unique value proposition. So it's what makes my brand so different that in the in in light of my customer having all these options why would they choose me and that can be found out a lot with the first step which is your your identity so learning about who you are um digging in asking the lord to reveal what are some unique aspects about myself that you have actually made a, a strength in the market that will draw the people that will attract the people that are going to be drawn to that unique part of me um and so uh, that your brands are differentiator so you know, that's that's also like your brand story, but that's colors, all those things work together to set you apart from everyone else. But then there's your brand is also your connector. And this is the part I believe that a lot of us, even including myself, where I skipped this, you know, I, I, I started a business, but I didn't know who I was speaking to. I didn't know who I wanted to serve. Um, I felt like I needed to accept everybody because I wanted to make money so bad. So I'm like, I'm just going to take anyone, <laughs> anyone who wants to pay. But the problem is that is I started attracting people that made my, my life miserable, where I would have rather gone back to my nine to five than continue working at, at as my own business owner. So that's very important. Your brand is going to connect you. Um, branding to me requires a little bit of transparency, a little bit of vulnerability, letting people in um, into those moments that maybe you technically probably wouldn't want to share on like a professional platform. Um, but people value connection, they value trust, they value having a shared identity. And so when when you can and it's not to say put your business out there and tell everybody your business and all that stuff, but it's pulling out those relevant details, those relevant, vulnerable stories um, that's going to make that connection. So people value stories because people value a shared identity. And your brand is that. Your brand is going to connect. It's a bridge to your business, right? So your business is the product and service or that you're offering or that you're selling, but your brand is going to bridge them to you. Without a brand, it's it's a lot harder to sell what you're what you're selling. It's a lot wow. harder. If we can get our brands to a place that it's doing the selling for us and we don't have to think of marketing gimmicks and marketing ploys and all these strategies, we can get our brand to do the speaking for us. It's just a mere simple walk across the bridge to your business and your clients not, and your customers not even thinking twice about what your what, what your pricing is, what your what they need to invest in. You know, I saw the power of that in my last launch. I went from and I'm just going to be candid. I went from I don't know. Uh, Let's see, the first launch I ever did without having that brand in place, I booked one client. And then this previous launch I went through, I booked six of seven spots. 
Um, and that was just because I showed up as myself. I had my brand down tag and I made connections with people. I rarely came online to just sell, sell, sell. It, it, it wasn't that people just learned to, oh, this is the purple and peach brand. And so by the time, you know, the cart opened, my clients weren't thinking twice about working with me. In fact, they were all divinely led by God to work with me. Um, so it, it's it's all about making connections and it's not trying to, you're not trying to be anything you're not. And so I encourage any of you to, to just embrace who you are because whoever it is that you are, there is someone out there looking just for you. And they're not looking for another version of you. They're not looking for a made up version of you. They're looking for you. And so that to me, your brand is your connector and your differentiator. Um, the third thing, when it comes to brand messaging, you wanna be client or customer facing. So when we show up online, when it comes to our messaging, when it comes to building content, whether you're doing a live, you're at a conference, you're a guest speaker, it's not for you to talk to the people that you hope will work with you. Um, your your brand messaging needs to speak right to the client, right to the customer. You're not you're not in their heads. You're not making decisions for them. You're not saying, oh, I hope they want to buy my stuff, or I hope they want to. No, you're speaking right to them. You're telling them, yeah, this product belongs on your shelf. Um, yes, you need this. Uh, you need this service where we're going to be working together. And during our one-on-one -on -one time, we're going to be developing your brand, and it's going to be so exciting. It's going to be so amazing. That's a lot different than me saying, "Hey guys, you know, um, you know, if you would like to work with me, um, here are some details. Here's what I think should." No, it's you want to be client customer facing. Your messaging is all about speaking to them. All they're waiting for is the invitation. You know, maybe they're gonna have to watch some of your stuff or read some of your content over time, but they're really waiting for that that final thing that you say something and they're like, yeah, that's who I need to be working with or that's who I need to purchase um, products from. Um, so you wanna be client facing, speak to their physical needs, their emotional needs, their spiritual needs, um, their mental needs. Um, desires that they want to have that maybe they don't want to say out loud because maybe they think it's selfish. You know, if, if, if you have a product that can increase the quality of someone's life, yeah, it may not be a necessity, but it's something that can up level their lives or make them feel better. You want to speak to that. Not so much that, oh, my product is this, 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 and this. The details are good, but really speak about what is it that the product is doing uh, for that customer, because that's why I think with branding, it's really about pulling out how is this affecting my client or my customer. Your business is the do what, what we're doing, but in the products, but your brand is more like, yes, here's an essential oil and yeah, it's sage, I don't know, whatever, right? Um, but really, what is this doing for them? Oh, it's helping them to increase their oxygen levels. I know nothing about essential oils, but you know, it, you're, you're talking about the benefits, the, the brand promise, essentially. So mm -hmm. engaging with my brand is going to help you achieve X, Y, and Z with your life. And because something I had to learn too, people are out for themselves. It's their money. Right. And they they have total right to decide where they want to spend that, where they want to not spend it. Um, mm -hmm. And so people are selfish uh, and rightfully so with their hard earned money. And so your brand needs to be able to make it easy for them to part with it. When your brand, you're, you can tell when your brand gets to a place of success, because when people are not flinching at your pricing or they're not flinching at, you know, the bundle deals and all these things, then you know that you have made it a lot easier for them to part with their money. But that comes by building trust and you build trust by um, showing your customers, showing your clients, like, I understand you. I know where you're at. I know where you're trying to get and I can help you with that. And then the fourth and final thing, and this goes back to what the Lord had taught me about branding is that your faithfulness is a multiplier of profit. So I love the parable of talents, Matthew 25. And he talks about how the master has gave his servants these talents. So one got five, one got two, the other got one. And the master went away for a long period of time. It doesn't tell us. So, you know, one servant goes out, he doubles his to 10. Uh, another servant goes out, he doubles his to four. But then there's one particular servant with the one that he got, he went and buried it. Now, how soon did he bury it? I don't know. But if the master was gone for a very long time and he buried his talent, what was he doing that whole time? I mean, if the master was gone for 30 years, 50 years, what was this unprofitable servant doing 
those 30, 50 years. And so when the master comes back, right, he rewards the, the ones that doubled their, their, um, their talents. But with the other one, he said, you're, you're an unprofitable servant. And he called him lazy and wicked. And well, the end for him wasn't all that, all that great. Um, and so one thing about when it comes to your brand, or in your, especially you're talking about your business and putting a brand on your business, um, you need to invest in that. Um, I thought that there were other ways around it, but honestly, there were no other ways. If you take mm -hmm. a cheap route, then you're going to get cheap results. Mm -hmm. um, if you choose to to hold on to um, funds that you can release into your brand, which is a form of stewardship, which is a form of faithfulness, um, then you're you're not going to get the return. You're not going to see your investment double. You're not seeing. I, I want to challenge you. Uh, if you if you invest in your business, um, observe what happens as a result of your investment Amen. um so when i finally decided to take the plunge and invest in my my brand whoa it just catapulted i was just like oh wow that's cool uh, because see god delights in our faithfulness to him because mm -hmm. you're you're not you're not we're not just out here selling products and and you know we're, i mean yeah we're running businesses but we're also kingdom women we're daughters yes. of god we're servants we're disciples um yes. and we have a message within each of us um yes. that needs to get out into the marketplace um not just by my product but um i want you to have a divine encounter with god i want you to see Christ in me. I want you to, to, to feel him. I want to impact your life in a way that after you finish buying my product and you leave, there's still something lasting that continues mm. on. And I find that the more that I'm willing to invest in that brand, God starts to release more of that, um, not just in, in finances, because that's to me how you get a profitable business. God just starts pouring in, sending you customers, sending you clients. But mm. He also pours a greater um, influence of his Holy Spirit in you to the, the people that you're serving. And to me, that's all about the experience. So when someone's done working with your brand, right, they've had an experience to some degree that's going to leave them coming back. Right. So that means your customer returns, but it also means that they're going to go rave about you. They might go tell others about your product, tell others about your service. And so now they're coming back They're They're sending people to you. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that to me is an extension of God um, multiplying, multiplying your 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 customer base, your clientele, whatever that looks like. And so um, just in just to summarize everything four foundational steps to building in, into your kingdom brand, your divine kingdom brand, um, resolving your mind and make a decision that God's called me to business. And that means there's customers out there that's looking for me. Um, and my brand is going to speak to them. Number two, understand what your brand is and what it isn't. So your brand is a differentiator. It's a connector. There's no room for comparison. There's no room for competition. That's one thing that separates what I do at Purple and Peach from other brand strategy, because mm -hmm. I don't believe in going, looking at competitors profile and saying, oh, how can I be different from them? Or how can I make my stuff better? Um, there's no room for that. You just be different in the way that God created you and then make connections. Um, the third thing, be client customer facing. So speak only to your customers, speak only to, um, I just did a live on difference between your followers and your customers. Your followers, they, they like your stuff. Your customers, they wanna pay for your stuff. So there's a huge difference between the two. You just wanna to speak to your customers. You don't wanna to speak to the followers. Yeah, that's cool, they like your stuff and all that, but we really just wanna to speak to our customers. Um, and the fourth and final thing is to invest. So that is a foundational step. If you wanna see success in your brand, see God take your brand to other levels, you need to invest in it. Um, and so that's the four foundational steps. I hope that was helpful for you ladies. And thank you again. If you have questions, if we have time for questions, Gail, let's do it. If not, you guys can connect with me on website or Facebook. Wow, wow, wow. I've got a ton of notes. That was so Yay. impactful to me. Um, as always, Charnel, thank you so much. Um, so many things I wanted to you know, say in my fish story at the beginning, what, what Charnel is describing is um, you're going to know your, your perch. You know, you're going to know you're, you're not trout. You're not looking for trout. You're not looking for lobster. You're looking for the perch and you're going to know everything to use. God's going to give you that. I love how in network marketing, so many miss the mark ladies, please hear this, that um, you think that your brand is your, your company. You think that your brand are the products. Your brand is you. They, they are interested. They are interested in your products. They are interested. However, there's tons of people selling stuff. 
wellness or makeup or whatever. They want to buy from you. They need to see your face, hear your voice and hear your message that, that Charnel was talking about that makes it intimately you. That's what they connect with. That's what they want yes. to connect with. And um, lastly, there was one other thing as far as network marketing um, and our perch. I just love how I think so often in the, in this industry of, of direct sales and network marketing, there's this there's this competitive spirit that people can get um, can get pulled into, and that mm. is um, wow what, what she's doing, or I can't do it the way yeah. she's doing it, or I can't do it that way. It's like no. What Charnel's teaching you is a kingdom brand. It's about you. And if God's mm -hmm. called you, you commit and you say, obviously I'm here. So I'm going to resolve that I'm here and I'm going to believe he has the customers for me. How am I going to speak to them? And it's okay. not speak to them the language of the product. It's speak to them the language of you. Ah, yes. wow. Charnel, so Wonderful. good. Well, let's, yeah, we have a few okay. minutes for some, for some question and answers. Um, I'd love for you guys to unmute yourselves and jump in and ask a question or clarification. <laughs> All right, don't all talk at once. <laughs> hey, Gail, we've got a question from the, uh, Sherry's wanting to know again, what was the four, uh, the, your faithfulness, the cheap route, um, the four, Sherry, can you tell us exactly what you were looking for there? Looking for the words and she gave them to me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm very, very detailed. Like if I, I get stuck, if I can't get it, I can't get the rest of the message. Right. Sherry, yeah. well, the, the good news is, Sherry, you've got the replay coming. So you're going to be able to listen to this. You're going to be able to listen to this over and over. Charnel did go through them a couple times at the beginning and then the end. So you're going to be able to, what I love about this two ladies, and thank you, Sherry, for bringing this up because it helps me remember to tell you guys, when you get these replays, you need to download them onto your desktop because they will go away. All right. Because I can't keep all of the content in Zoom. It's too much content on the cloud in Zoom. So you need to, as soon as you get them, download them, then you have them forever as a resource and you can go back and back to them. I wanted to say something to Molly and to everybody else too. I understand, I, I, I send her a message, but I also wanted to say, I understand where she's coming from. Mm -hmm. Gail, you probably understand, know what I'm going to say too. Um, but being... I'm 54, you know, I have multiple. And one of the things that this current world manufactured crisis has done has created, has, has brought the multiplicity out, the stress of everything. And so trying to learn what needs to be done I mean, I got myself into so many different things as Gail, you know, and I can't put all the pieces together. So Charnel getting these things right here, that helps me a lot. And I wanted to say thank you. Gail has given me so much as well. I've got another lady that's helped me some as much as well mm -hmm. and but for me it's like I need somebody like right here all the time helping me put all the pieces together that's the holy spirit sherry <laughs> but I mean that's you, you know sometimes I used to tell people I need somebody to take me by the hand a physical person to take me by the hand mm -hmm. What I finally did was able to do is I created this spreadsheet of things to do that are basic things like just taking a shower, mm -hmm. you know, drinking water. That's where, since so that's why I'm saying to Molly, I understand. Yeah. Maybe to other ladies, there are those of us out there that we have to write it down just to take a shower. Yeah. To write it down to go eat a meal. And, and Sherry, thank you so much for that. I love your heart that you acknowledge that for Molly, that, and, and all of us, we see, here's the deal, ladies. 
we all have different things that we struggle with. That's why we don't want to be comparing ourselves because the Lord gives me things to struggle with. It isn't the same things he gives you to struggle with. But the deal is in the kingdom, the struggle is a gift. And it's, it's, a, it's a call for us to remember how fragile we are and how desperately we need him every moment of the day to guide us. Um, so thank you, um, Sherry, for that. Just the reminder that we keep our eyes on the Lord and we remember that we all struggle with things. We all struggle with things. And that's why we need Jesus. Anybody have a question for Charnel or even a thank you or comment? Yeah, Tammy. Well, thank you so much, Charnel. I always, I always love when I get to see you speak and you're just a joy. You're just a light. It's wonderful. Thank you. <laughs> um, so my question was, in trying to, I realized, connect me to my unique identity. God created me for this. But what would be like some, like either questions you could ask or a couple things when you're trying to figure out that brand and which way to go. Not that you don't pray about it. Like I know he gave you your purple and peach, but yeah. almost like in trying to hone in the unique identity and, and yeah. where to go. So what would be? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's an excellent question. I, and I, if I, if I can recall how I got to mine, cause I feel like God, he was steering me, but of course hindsight is 2020. So I didn't know at the time, but I would start with your journey to how you got to where you are in terms of your business, because mm -hmm. I think uh, woven in that is your story, but also the story of your customer, um, because that's kind of what the brand story does. It just bridges both of you together. Um, so I would start with how, where did you start? Um, what were some of those struggles and areas of struggles that uh, that you had to endure and overcome to get to the point where you then started your business? Mm -hmm. um, because I think, and it's in that that part of your story. So I mean, we we have huge other stories too, aside from our businesses. But I found, at least with Purple and Peach, my my brand story came as a result of me connecting dots um, of my struggles. Uh, my victories and how they eventually led me to starting Purple and Peach. Um, because those same struggles and things that I went through, my clients are also going through as well. So the, I feel like that's how God led me into brand coaching because almost all of my clients I've worked with, they they were all some version of me. <laughs> you know, they, they had that brand identity struggle. They didn't know how to get started. So what we'll do sometimes in the program is I just have them tell me their testimony from start to finish and how you got here. And then I start pulling out, oh, okay, this is, I'm starting to see a pattern here. This is how your customer is gonna connect to you. Cause they're not gonna relate to everything you've been through but they're gonna relate to maybe one or two things that's relevant to your business. So mm -hmm. if you're selling a certain product or you're uh, offering a certain service, you want their you want your story to be very relevant to what that is and then that way when you're when you're sharing your story with your customers and so on or building messaging uh, it's, it's going to be very relevant to where they are too so i hope that helps it was excellent thank you awesome you're thank welcome. you so much charnel i love that yes. i love yes. this story and we we it's so you know it's so god because we ended today's challenge with a sneak preview into tomorrow which is um, discovering that that deeper purpose and what are the, okay. what are the life experiences that you had your story um, okay. that have really brought you through um, you know where to where you are today. So yeah. thank you okay. so very much for this thank for the you. time for your 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 presentation for the gifts and ladies. Here's some really great news. Next week you're going to get an email from Charnel. I'm going to send it out to all of the backstagers. And it's going to be um, different ways that you can continue to connect with her. And so um, you're going to, that's all going to be coming to you. Each of our speakers will be sending you an email next week. So you can look forward to that. And um, thank you so much for um, joining the backstage. And tomorrow we've got Carrie Olson on Kingdom Wealth. Um, and so it's going to be fabulous. You're not going to want to miss any of these. And remember, download the replays when they come so you can have them. You can use them for your own future training and training of your team um, or those that come into your community. So thanks so much. And thanks so much, Charnel. Thank you. Thank <laughs> Bye, you. Everybody. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>